Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Eastern Consolidated, MNT Bank, Sterling National Bank, Meridian Capital Group, Customers Bank, Aerial Property Advisors, Perfect Building Maintenance. Additional funding has been provided by AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, AVR Realty Company, Avison Young, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Laumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chase Mortgage Lending, Citizens Bank, Cohen Equities, Colliers International, NYC, Collins Building Services, Connect One Bank, CPEX Real Estate Services, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Genova Burns, Hendro Properties, Handler Real Estate Organization, HAP Investments, Hodges Ward Elliott Inc., Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Madison Realty Capital, Matone Group, Mercantile Bank, New Banks, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., Peoples United Bank, Polsonelli, Rosewood Realty Services, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Knackle Group at Cushman and Wakefield, Maringoff Family Foundation, The Moynian Group, and these friends. It's called deli. It's called smoked meat. It's called pastrami. It's a New York history. It's heritage over here. And today I've brought together a third generation deli man and a first generation deli man, restaurateur, bagel baker, and so on to provide us generation to generations and on the favorite subject in New York, deli. So my guests they include Jay Parker, who is the proprietor, owner of Ben's Best Deli and Catering Restaurant in Regal Park, founded in 1945. Correct. And from Montreal, Canada, the man who brought Montreal smoked meat to New York City, Noah Bemeroff of Mile End Deli and Black Seed Bagel and Grand Army. So... What did your parents say when you said, I'm going to law school and I'm going to open up a restaurant in New York City with smoked meat, which is similar to pastrami, but it's different, correct? Correct. For my audience, this is smoked meat and this is pastrami. Well, my parents were, uh, were pretty shocked, you know, by my decision to drop out of law school and to open a deli. But as my mother says... Uh, for her, the most important thing is that I'm happy. And if this was going to make me happy, then so be it. I know that Montreal is the home of smoked meat. But, I mean, did you, this was uh, something that you always ate? or it was, how was it? it was only because the cholesterol was in my bloodstream from eating so much smoked meat. But, no, it's not in my heritage uh, from a family perspective, but certainly it's in my heritage as a Montreal Jew. And, um, you know, it's just something that really resonated within me. And um, I wanted now, to be part of it. The smoked meat in Montreal, is it all, it's kosher style, all of it, or is it? Uh, m most of the, the, the delis that serve smoked meat tend to be kosher style, but not kosher. Okay, now we go to the third generation deli man, okay? It was Jacob first, Southern Boulevard. It was Ben second, and then it was Jay with his degree from Hopper and also a master's who went into the business. What's going on today in the deli business? 73 years later? 73 Regal? years later and we're stronger and better than ever. We just, the future is looking great. Um, 
Things have changed a little bit, but um, all I can say is for the kosher end of it, um, we see we see some really great, great things happening. Neighborhoods are changing, but we seem to be right on top of that. So here's the question. So what, of, of the products, okay, you both operate seven days a week. Okay, what are your hours? Uh, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And you? 9 to 9. 9 to 9. So what is the product that people are coming in for? Which, I mean, you sell a variety of things besides this, you know, because you're, you're dairy and you're meat, so you're not limited to what he is doing for only meat. What's the main products that people come in for and what are they looking for? Most people come in for smoked meat sandwich or corned beef sandwich, corned beef Reuben, uh, bagels and lox, the, tr- the traditional stuff. Uh, we also sell something called poutine, which is a uh, Montreal Quebecois specialty, which is absolutely has nothing to do with Jewish deli. It's uh, French fries, cheese curd, um, and gravy. And uh, it was on our original menu How because... How far are you from uh, Maman? <laughs> I was going to say, call my cardiologist. <laughs> okay. I'll be right over. <laughs> it comes with a side of, uh, you know, uh, you know, heart medication. Even a Lipitor. Yeah, Lipitor, right. yeah. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's not, not, not for the faint of heart, but people come in and eat a lot of it. And uh, a lot of people order a smoked meat sandwich and a side of poutine, believe it or not. And uh, it's become, interestingly, uh, a part of how other folks have viewed Delhi, at least New Delhi. And it's uh, interesting, as other delis, newer delis right. have opened up around the country, I've noticed that on their menus, uh, poutine is there. Really? And I'm, I ask myself, wow, that's really, uh, that's well, really you know odd. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I thought I was killing him with knishes, but this guy takes it to the next level. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, do, you, do you have knishes? We do have knishes. What about stuffed derma? We don't do stuff derma. That's where we got you. Ah, Passover stuff derma. That's it. So, what's the, the main item today? Okay, and the, and the, uh, the the population has changed. Right. The neighborhood has changed, which I'm going to even talk about you. But what's the main item today? Well, it's still the corned beef and the pastrami. I remember you can go to any diner, any place, and you can get see corned beef and pastrami on the menus. It's that's really part of the culture, part of of what. Americans eat these days. I don't care what part of the country you go to, you can still find it. But when you need the real stuff, the real deal, you'll have to come to places like ours. Now, here's the question. You've been a profile on Diner Drives and Dives, okay? Right. Which one? It, I'm not quite sure we are, but... Uh, then you were also on in the movie Deli Man. Yes. Okay? And recently in the movie The Comedian. The Comedian. Okay? Don't blink. But I'm on there. Deli Man, okay, on Deli Man, I, I did see the movie and... You had the guy in Texas who basically... Ziggy, Ziggy yes. over there. Ziggy Gruber, great guy. Are there more delis being open? I mean, since you're both in this business, do you see uh, proliferation of delis around the nation? The answer is yes. Um, well, backstory, there was somebody, one of my, ho- my friends who's a wholesaler, Eddie from A to Z, calls me up and says he has somebody who wants to open a kosher deli in Louisville. Can he come for a week or two into New York? And when I let him see how my operation runs? And the answer was yes. And he came for a couple of weeks. He worked, we, you know. We so should. wait a second. You know, this could be like an internship it's, residency, yeah. right? I, I mean, we could see the, the so two-week ta- ta- two residency program in, in, co- in, in, in Delhi back, business. He took it back to Louisville. Who are your customers today in this store? Because when you originally opened, I mean, when you, your father opened it, you know, you had the Holocaust survivors, you had predominantly Jews, now, now it's changed. Well, we're still a restaurant. Um, so anybody who is interested in eating restaurant food is our potential customer. Yes, we specialized in things that might be, you know, um, Eastern European, you know, the corn beef, the pastrami, stuffed cabbage, goulash, stuff like that. Um, but still, there's the fresh turkey, the roast beef, and, and all these other items that you might want. The kitchen is, is better than ever. We, all, we have the soups and the sauces. They're all terrific. Um, so that there's, there's nobody we can't, are you, att- are you attracting to the millenniums? Desperately trying to, yes. Yes. Um, these are people who, who like food and are foodies, and uh, they're not price sensitive. I've, I've, you know, I've seen some of my older folks look at a check, what, $15 a sandwich? What are you, a thief? You know? <laughs> and then my come in and go, geez, give me two. That's pretty cheap. You know? And your customers today? 
we're, we're definitely appealing to millennials. We also appeal to young, uh, young families, Borm Hill, where the original deli is in Brooklyn, is right. very much a, a young, um, a, it's sort of like a, a family-oriented oh. expat community from yeah. the West Village. Right. <laughs> but when you opened in 2010, Brooklyn gentrification was taking place, but not to the level that it's had the last couple of years. Well, certainly it's it's uh, rapidly increased in the last few years. Uh, in 2010, it was a slightly different uh, slightly different customer. It was slightly less affluent. It was a, a younger customer, actually. Um, when I opened Myelena, I was only 27 years old, and uh, I attracted I a lot of people. I mother saying, I... Hey, what, what happened? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? Okay. Yeah, well, you know, and I was attracting people that were exactly who I was. Uh, people who were living in the neighborhood with roommates, renters, uh, people who were students, uh, or very, very early on in a professional career. So, so here's my question. As I will show my audience, there are two bagels. This one looks nice and fat, but this is a machine-made bagel. Then there's another bagel over here, which is handmade in water and in honey. Why did you, the 27-year-old Michigan who went into the smoked meat business, go into the bagel business? Well, it was a natural progression from uh, deli to, uh, to bagels. We served bagels at Mile End when we first opened that we actually imported ourselves from Montreal, which was a, obviously a point of controversy. What, there aren't good enough bagels in New York for you? Um, to me, Mile End was a representation of, uh, of my experience in you know, growing up as a Montreal Jewish guy. And these are things that felt very personal and far more familiar to me than a bagel in New York or, or a pastrami sandwich. Um, so, so, you know, Mile End grew from that, uh, that desire to, to bring those familiar items from home. And so it only made sense that if I was going to uh, endeavor to bake the bagels myself, uh, in New York, instead of this, frankly, you know, stupid idea of bringing them down from Montreal. It wasn't stupid. Uh, it was just very cost ineffective. And, um, and so I decided, you know, we, we should really endeavor to bake our own bagels that uh, take the best qualities of any bagel from anywhere, bring them together and try to produce I mean, people look at these and they say, oh, those look like Montreal bagels. The truth is, Montreal bagels are a little bit different from these bagels, and these are... Uh, this is a... This is a composite. Hybrid? This is a hybrid. A hybrid bagel. This is a hybrid bagel. Uh, there's, but, it contains salt, which Montreal bagels don't contain. Um, they... But you uh, said you need a special cream cheese, which is over here, which makes it a little better. It does. It does make it a little bit better. And in, in Canada, we, we have a very robust dairy industry, and so you, you're able to find fresh, a lot more in the way of fresh cheeses at your average grocery store. I decided that we needed to step up the, the cream cheese game and to uh, find... Go to the next level. Go to the next level. Now, the, isn't that cheese. the same way with mustard? Oh, mustard is a whole other story. Mustard is 400 different types of mustards. Yeah, but deli mustard. Yeah, we've been using the same one for the 73 years we've been there. The same deli mustard. The same deli mustard. It's but, but perfection. It's perfection. And you? What kind of deli mustard do you use? You know, in Montreal, delis smoke meat is served with yellow mustard. There's no such thing as brown deli mustard. No, no. no. Out Sorry. So, they uh, burn us out. They, I can see the toy pitchforks and, and, and uh, but, torches. But, 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 but so just for, the, just for the record, we do use, we use Golden's brown, you know, brown deli mustard as, uh, as our baseline mustard. But we always keep a container of French's yellow mustard tucked away in the back in case a true Montrealer comes in and says, I, I, I want a smoked meat sandwich on rye, but it, I want the yellow mustard. Well, we only use Baker's brand mustard. That's it. It's the only thing any kosher deli has ever used. Baker's so is that the, like the official That's, lines? You can't buy it any place else. You can only find it in, in delis. Baker's brand. That's it. You'll never see it in a supermarket. Well, next to a, next so, to so the So here's the question. Have, or anything else. have you, since you are the pastrami, okay, right. uh, which takes approximately, as you said to me, six hours. Plus well, yeah, but it's pickled first. It's 21 days to pickle it, and then we have to smoke it. 21 days to pickle, right, and then to smoke it, right. 
Okay, have you ever tasted Canadian smoked meat? The answer is yes. There used to be a place in Montreal called Ben's. So, please, take a, take a little taste, and I want you to... T please. Okay. We have a napkin over here. I'm yes. not doing the cream cheese. You're not doing the I'm cream cheese. No, doing no, the cream, cream, cream cheese is not meant for The cream okay. cheese is not meant. Just take a little piece. Pass, yeah, not the cream take cheese. Take a napkin and take <laughs> a little piece, okay? Okay, we'll try some. It uh, looks delicious. You know it's it's deco, yeah, which is a really nice, rich piece of meat. Has a lot of fat inside of it, so piece. that when you smoke it out, the fat leaves, well, and, and you have this nice soft textury piece. Yeah, it's me. it's nice. It's brittle. It comes right apart. Please don't cut the oh. host's hand. Ah, that's delicious. Mm. And I got the flavor, this that smoky kind of a sweet flavor in the back. Mm. We use a good amount of sugar in our cure, mm. which helps. Wow. And then, you, and then you've got a little further back, a little bit of spice. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So my question is, since... It's good. Okay. It's great. I, I'm happy that each one is complimentary on the service. Wow. What, <laughs> can, what is the difference from the connoisseurs who... You've been in this food business for many years. Well, what's the difference in taste and how, and how the product is made? Well, first, uh, you say difference. It's two different products. So it's like saying, do you like a Cadillac better than a Lincoln? No, no, okay. I'm not talking, it's like filet mignon and right. rib, rib steak. Is mm -hmm. Rib eye. This is delicious. This is I know that they've had on some of the travel shows and mm -hmm. other shows uh, com competitions, okay? And I know that, have you ever been in a competition? I don't do competitions. I only judge competitions. You only judge competitions. Yeah. Now, yeah. What, what, what competition have you judged? <laughs> I've done. I've judged a few amateur amateur cooking competitions. Uh, I've also. I was. Uh, I don't know if it's aired yet. Even I was uh, on a Food Network. Uh, I was a judge on a Food Network competition. But um, I only judge beauty contests. But as <laughs> nobody's asked me, so right. I'm I'm available. <laughs> well, I think the you know. There are there are some there are some substantial differences between pastrami and smoked meat. I mean, smoked meat, I'll speak from the smoked meat perspective. Smoked meat is, um, is not pickled the same way uh, that a pastrami or corned beef is. It's, uh, it's actually cured in a dry setting. So we don't have, it doesn't get plunged into a water bath, um, a brine, if you will. Um, it uh, is coated with uh, salt and sugar and a slew of other spices and herbs. And it's le it, we basically just leave it to its own devices for about two weeks. So right there, you know, right out of the gate, you're you're going through a, a the first process. Mm -hmm. Right then, and there is very, is pretty different between the two items. Um, you know, and even before you get to that point, pastrami is typically you know traditional pastrami like like you make is uh, is made from navel, and traditional smoked meat is made from whole brisket, which is a combination of the flat portion of the brisket, which we typically see made into corned beef, and the deckel, um, or the point, which is the kind of back portion, which is where this, this the, particular the meat is from. This is what law boards did. This is when one and a half year of law school, right? This is, this is, this is what you learn in uh, constitutional law. Um, so now, let, yeah. me, let me get to the, 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 the real questions over here. You came in with a new product. You're in a business that we've seen a, the, the, the decline over the years, the mm -hmm. changing of the world. Where do you see the future in your product being in, in the Canadian and also in the competition, like Frankel's and other places that are opening up? Do you see a large change? Do you see Delhi growing in, in New York and around the country? I don't know if I see Delhi itself growing, but I do see people turning back to uh, the food of a former generation. I, I see people uh, both with deli food and with um, other foods of ethnic origins, people are r regaining their an interest in exploring those foods and understanding them better. So, you know, I'm not Chinese and I'm not Italian, but I have a great interest in having very authentic Szechuan food and very authentic red sauce. Uh, and I think that, you know, 
conversely in those you know, mean, people of those origins. the Italian are, restaurants now are owned by the Albanians Albanian. and the Croatian. <laughs> You're involved with the kosher food industry. Well, uh, coming from the other end, the, the answer is, I think, one of the reasons that we're in the condition that we are as, as the industry um, consolidated, we became less relevant. You know, somebody will come to me and say, you know, the Carnegie just closed down. Is that good for you? And my answer is, well, no, it's not good for me because you're marginalizing everybody else. You drive down the street, you see 14 pizza shops. What do you want for lunch? I want pizza. If you don't see us, you don't think about us. But I am happy to say that through younger folks coming up that, uh, and, and other businesses opening, that uh, there, there is a resurgence and, and there is a pop there's no reason why this can't be as popular today as it was back then. Again, we have to grow those people to understand some of the product. I mean, when my grandfather came, he understood the stuff, and he was selling to people who understood it. So now we have to educate people into how to See, understand but it. In addition to Brooklyn, Noah has two other locations, really one other. Okay, so you've gone into Soho, NoHo, right? Mm -hmm. so where do you see the next opportunity? Uh, it's probably not in New York. It's probably in um, other markets that... Uh, don't have even, you know, the wealth of delis that New York still has. We were talking about tradition, essentially, with going back to heritage and so on, and people are looking a little bit more, you know, genealogy, and they wanted to find out about us. Do you think it has to be in a city where there is a large Jewish population, or is it, is it just the deli idea? I mean, because the Carnegie had been in Vegas and so on. Well, um, Carnegie still is in Vegas, despite closing the New right. York store. Um, and I think the, the, the quick answer to that is it's certainly helpful to, to be in a market where there is a, a, a noteworthy Jewish population, especially on the catering side of the mm -hmm. business, where you're doing family life cycle occasions and, you know, you know for holidays, 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 holidays things yeah. like that, of course. Uh, but I, I think that ultimately the the you know Delhi is is part of the American lexicon the you know the North American lexicon of of food. And I mean, but there aren't too many Delhi cookbooks. There are there are very few Delhi cookbooks because um, and we could touch on this afterward, which is the idea that Delhi has for a very long time um, been operated by individuals who are in competition with one another instead of collaborators. And not to Would say you feel that, that you, way. Not to say no. Wow. Well, I, I was on the board of directors of the Delhi Association for years until it closed, and no, where everybody was very congenial, and you know, you make these these friends, like Abe from Second Avenue and and Ronnie, and and you know, if you run out of product, I would call Abe and said, Abe, I can borrow a couple hundred pounds of pastrami. He said somebody brought it down. He would loan me anything. It was I a needed, different camaraderie in, in that generation. Yeah. Okay, a different type of situation. The, the restaurant business in general, this failure rate is so higher. Mm -hmm. So, but. I think the camaraderie, but I haven't seen, has a new kosher, rest, kosher deli opened up in New York City in the last couple of years? On the glock kosher side, yeah. Uh, we've seen a lot of really nice ones opening up. And, and again, the, the, the level of the, of the food prep and, and the service, it's, it rivals anything. If it wasn't for the yarmulkes, you wouldn't know that it was that, you know, that, it was that kind of place. Yeah. That, I, I, let me clear that up. You know, people come to, to the... To the to the expectation that, that if a place is, is glad kosher, that it can't be that good. And I have to tell you, I've eaten in glad kosher restaurants which rival anything. I, I think a good example of that, there's a place called Mike's Bistro. It's on East 54th Street, and the, the chef is a culinary, right. you know, went to the Culinary Institute, he's a very fine chef, and th the place is fine, okay? You know, it's not the tradition what you thought, okay? Right. The, 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 you know, because as you just said, and basically a lot of the millenniums, the orthodox millenniums, want a quality place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a place downtown uh, right in Wall Street, uh, which is doing fantastic. Over we this. have a place in Queens on, on, on Main Street. Uh, Bedford, it was, it, it, it's an excellent, I think they have a place in California as well. I mean, really, really fine product. So here's the question for both of you. Third generation, first generation. So what's next for you? Okay, you're into deli. You have a couple of stores. You're into bagels. Where do you where do you see you growing? Up? We're gonna keep pushing on on these fronts. Um, we're 
as, as I mentioned, I'm interested in other markets and we've been exploring other opportunities outside of New York City. Uh, and me personally, I, I, I do love this business. Um, and by business, I mean the restaurant business and the deli, you know, what we do as a, as a deli is part of the, the broader, uh, my, my broader interest in, in the restaurant business overall. So I'm going to continue to open up restaurants in addition to hopefully continuing to open up many more delis and bagel shops. Jay? Well, we have right all over the country, so we're, we're going with that. And I think that Ben's Best, who's been around since 1945, okay, uh, and Mile End, who's been around since 2010, will continue to grow. I hope you enjoy the food, and I know that my staff and team will enjoy it, and see you next week.